Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another interview for our Open House. Today we are joined by Gilbert and Oka. Welcome Gilbert. Thank you, Greg. Nice this, to be here. This time with his All Blacks Mental Skills Coach hat on, if that's alright. Pleasure. I would love to have a chat about the most successful sporting organisation on the whole planet, the All Blacks. Um, Gilbert, just run us through a few stats. How long has the All Blacks been in formation and their winning, uh, winning record? The All Blacks, Greg, is a... Uh as a team or entity that's been in, in uh, position for over a hundred years. Mm -hmm. um, it has a wonderful, proud tradition going back to some teams which were called the Natives and the Originals and the Invincibles, but uh, the beginning was back in New Zealand over a hundred years ago um, and they have maintained uh, a powerful winning tradition from that particular point forward. Just as a you know, the, a really good record for some of our AFL coaches is a 50-60% winning record. What's the All Blacks win-loss ratio? Well, you know, it's varied um, through the ages with the different coaches, but um, as an international sporting side, I'm not sure of what the exact percentage is, but, uh, but I think it's close to 80%. Amazing. So um, it means that for that history, um, the All Blacks have maintained and, and uh, around an 80% success rate and so when you compare that to any other international team in any code, anywhere, um, it, it's simply terrific. It just amazes me that um, I think you've been involved for around about 10 years. Yeah, this is my 10th year. So if you wind back the clock 10 years and other sports to actually have a full time or a person involved in their team at a management level just looking after the mental health as it were, uh, some real insight there, some real foresight I guess is a better word. Um, how did you come to be involved and how has your role evolved? Well initially I um, came to be involved because I was playing sport myself, the sport of volleyball and I began to mix with some people who were reasonably high achievers in, in other codes. Um, one of those happened to be Wayne Smith who's still currently the um, assistant coach for the All Blacks and he has been head coach. Uh, when I came on board 10 years ago, I was actually the assistant manager. So, um, and in those days, uh, a lot of people poo-hooed the, the sports psych and the mental skills as an unnecessary add-on to the performance environment. And as we've learnt as time's gone on, that you know, the, the physical space and the technical space and the tactical space have a certain degree of variability, but um, the mental space is huge. Mm. And so why wouldn't you have somebody who is in your environment um, looking at attending to assisting players to, to narrow and get a greater degree of control over that variability. So I've been a assistant manager, I've had a role as a sports psychologist and currently my role um, is mental skills coach, so we have a scrum coach, an attack coach, a defence coach, a forwards coach, a kicking coach, a strength and conditioning coach. Um, why wouldn't it just necessarily have a mental skills coach? Yeah, it amazes me. I'm fairly close to some AFL sort of football sides, and it just amazes me that they haven't taken that to the same degree, the same level. Yeah, I think you need a commitment from the coaches and an understanding really that um, on the day it's that space that determines the outcome more often than not. Yeah. So why would you leave it to chance and just hope that people are going to develop those abilities? through a natural progression of performance. Two things I want to talk about. One is the brand. It's just that All Blacks, we haven't even mentioned rugby. We haven't mentioned New Zealand. Everybody knows what the All Blacks are and what they stand for. Um, one of the strongest brands in the world? Yeah, I think there's been some research done um, through different organisations where I think in seven or eight countries they ask um, which of the brands, and they talk about Milan and they talk about the, the Formula One and they talk about Manchester United um, soccer football mm -hmm. and the research points that the All Black brand is the fifth most recognised sporting brand in the world and in, in our own country um, it, is, it is so recognisable now globally that you don't even have to put the sport or the country on, right. it's just got the Silver Fern and the All Blacks and the, the tradition fights very hard to make sure that the jersey does not get contaminated by sponsors and large logos and in this commercial climate that is a challenge as well. Sure. The other thing that the All Blacks uh, brings to the table for somebody that's not right into the actual game of rugby is the haka. 
extraordinarily well known, um, extraordinarily passionately performed. Now you had some involvement in the haka evolving within the team. Can you just talk us through that? Yeah, I think the um, the nature of sport is that when a new coach comes on board, quite often all the traditions that have been present can you know get put up for auction as such. Shall we use it or shall we not? Mm. And so sometimes different coaches have had different connections and emphasis with the, with the haka. When I started um, back 10 years ago, um, it was performed um, passionately by a lot of the Māori people. Um, a lot of the Europeans and other cultures quite often did the haka because it was a tradition but never really understood what it meant. And as New Zealand has evolved into a multicultural um, society now with Tongans and Samoans and Fijians and Tokelauans and Europeans and Maori, then we have to had to find a way to reconnect in that particular tradition to those particular people. Mm. And um, we had, we were educated by some wise people from the east coast of the North Island. We talked about what it meant to be a New Zealander and what it meant to be an All Black. And the moment any of your ancestors are buried in that soil, then you become part of that particular country. Mm. And so when when the, the All Blacks pull on that black jersey. Uh, with that silver fern on their crest, are drawing their ancestors through the earth into their bones and into their souls to be with them on that day in that battle. And currently, we have a group that needed to get some understanding of that. So we spend a lot of time talking about what it meant to them, what it meant to the country, what it meant to the rugby union, and and, and so together that's come together with a neat connectedness that we 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 created our new haka kapa or which is surging massive black, without disrespecting its baby, its older brother, which was Kamati. So the All Blacks have two hackers, and we just decide at different times which one springs is used. Just with the Haka Guild, it looks a really fearsome type of uh, performance. Is it there to intimidate the other teams, or is there genuinely for that playing group? Well, the, 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 the whole essence of the Haka is a, is, is a challenge, there's no doubt about that, but it's a it's a bringing forth of all your forces for that day and for that battle. Mm. Uh, most of the connectedness for the Haka is about us. Mm. It's about the people going into battle and it's about drawing all the people from their past through the eons of time who line up behind them on this day and this moment for this big occasion. Mm. So it's a, it's, a huge, um, it's a huge tradition and it's a huge power, but it's more about us and who and what we are but, and if it's done really, really well, it'll normally scare them. <laughs> the other people anyway. Yeah, you're talking about it even, you, you can just sense the, the passion for it. Last thing, Gilbert, um, the expectation of a whole nation rides on your team every single time you go out there. World Cup coming up in 2011. 2007 didn't work out the way you wanted it to. Extraordinarily disappointing for your playing group, for your management and for the whole nation. How do your uh, management team handle the expectation of the whole nation, especially for the 2011 Cup? Yeah, I think you, when you look at the, the history and the traditions of rugby, and it's particularly the All Blacks per se, there's high levels of expectation. And, you know, pressure only ever comes about when you have high expectations, when you have a high degree of scrutiny, where people are looking at everything you do, and there's a high degree of consequences. So, if you don't nail what you do on that day in that moment, then that, then there's consequences for it. And in the sport, and in our arena, they're huge. And so they're all pressures that come externally. And what we've learned is that uh, we've got to embrace those particular expectations and we want to create more internal expectations and a higher degree of internal scrutiny and have consequences for what we do that are higher than anything external that anyone else can put on us. The fact that this management group has uh, been there before, I think, is an advantage. Um, will it give us an entitlement to win? No. Um, will it increase our opportunity and possibility? I hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, we're certainly wiser and more prepared. Um, and we're still a year out. Um, and in sport, as we know, sometimes everything you do comes down to the day. And there will be that moment on one or two or three days, hopefully, next year when we front up at the World Cup, but um, you know, the, the, we have higher expectations of ourselves and we scrutinise more things than anyone can publicly, and by embracing pressure in that context, 
we give ourselves a great opportunity to do the business. Beautiful. What do you, uh, how do you prepare from now to 12 months out? Is there, have the All Blacks come together very many times between now and then? Not a lot, actually, agree. We got, um, we head over to Europe for a Grand Slam, and this particular All Black management group and team have, have got two of those in their tenure. Mm -hmm. And there's only ever been three in the history of um, rugby mm -hmm. in, in this country. So it's unbelievable that we've got two, we've got an opportunity to have three. And um, next year we then go into the Super 15 and we won't have any contact with the players through that. Mm -hmm. We'll have an abridged Tri-Nations competition with Australia and South Africa where we play each other home and away and then we're bang into it. So there's more time away than there is together so that will present challenges um, for this particular group and its preparation protocols. It's really interesting to me that this is the first time that a coach of a team that has lost in the World Cup has been reappointed for the next four year challenge. Um, can you just talk me through you know, how that came about and, and the advantages of that? Yeah, well, I think um, it took a lot of guts actually mm. because, you know, because the pressure is high and the expectations are high in, the, in, in our country, is the, the pathway had been the coach comes in here and they go four years, a natural cycle to a World Cup, and if they lose that World Cup, then they normally kick them out, and then put another person in, and then they come back and start at the same point again. Now we've been doing that since 1987, we won the first one, but since that particular point, through 91, 95, 2003, 2007, every time the coach got to that point, they kicked them out. And so this particular board of the New Zealand Rugby Union have had the courage to say, we want to change the mould. Um, we think that this particular group can learn from it. And by coming through here from 2007, uh, we started in 2004 into 2007. So the starting point was at a more advanced level. We hope that that's going to serve a great value in 2011. Gilbert, could talk to you forever. Thank you very, very much indeed for your time. Yes, for everything you do for both our Harcourt's group and uh, the All Blacks are a very lucky team to have you and wish you all the very best in uh, 2011, my man. Thank you, Greg. 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 Thank you, Gre